Hey everybody, Ron from Back in the Fairway here, and today I am going to talk about one of the hot topics on uh, <clears throat> most golf-related things, and it's actually kind of a little bit in the past, but um, certain people continue to poke the bear on this one, so I wanted to weigh in with uh, a golf thought today, and that is on the soft is slow debate on golf balls. Um <clears throat> This one really jumped out at me as strange because what it is is I originally read into the data and I looked at it and I have to say the guys that put the test together, if you haven't seen it, it is at my golf spy, um, did a fantastic job of laying out balls and types and speeds and angles and, and all sorts of great information for consumers to look at and decide on. And... <clears throat> What it's kind of turned into is a little bit of a, there are five balls you should play and nothing else and that type of thing. And I'm not sure that's exactly where they were going with it, but that's kind of what it's turned into. And that's kind of what they've glammed onto with the soft is slow tagline. Now, there's a lot more to a ball than just the compression or the club face speed or that type of thing that people should consider. Um, <clears throat> first off, if you went in and just picked irons that you could hit farther than anything else or a driver that you could just hit farther than anything else, that's, that's, a, that's a way to play the game. The issue with that is if conditions change, does that still work? For example, I will tell you that Early in the year when I was playing the Mizuno JPX 900 forged irons, I picked up a ton of distance because the irons were de-lofted a little bit off of my traditional blade irons. They were um, incredibly perfect flights. They were, they, were, they were ideal. When I hit them, I absolutely loved them. But as soon as I got into my first windy condition day, I had no hope of bringing that ball down lower. Therefore, I completely lost the ability to control the ball in the wind. Now, that's something that just didn't work for me. For somebody else, that may work just fine, but for me, it didn't work at all. Golf balls are exactly the same thing. You may not want to go out and buy a faster, more distance delivering golf ball at $50 or $60 a dozen or even at $35 a dozen because it may not be what your game absolutely needs. Now, for me, I had a complete kind of a change of course on my ball selection. Um, as you know, last winter I tested a whole ton of balls. I settled on one. It turned out that uh, that particular ball wasn't going to be placed on the USGA conforming list because they didn't want to pay to have it done. Um, they were a small time company. One of their balls was already through the process. They didn't want to pay for any more of them. I get it, makes sense. But for me, going into tournament play, I had to find something that was different. Um, <clears throat> so I began the process kind of with what worked really well and what didn't. And as I did more and more homework on it, I saw that Titleist had the Pro V1X that was a high fly. I saw that they had the, the Pro V1, which was a mid flight, but the AVX was a low flight ball. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, well, the dimple patterns are different, so therefore they're going to fly differently. Honestly, I believe the Pro V and the Pro V1X are both uh, about 105 compression, if I'm not mistaken, whereas the AVX is about a 95. Now, in all honesty, the 1 or the 1X probably would make more sense for me, but I was getting an incredible ball flight with the AVX. It's right in the window where I wanted it. I could make it go up, I could make it go down. It was a perfect solution for me. Now, that doesn't mean that it's the best ball out there. What it does mean is that it fit my game really, really well. That's not to say the Bridgestone BRX or uh, the Tour, Tour BX or whatever the, the different models were. It doesn't mean they would be any less of a great option for me. It's just the AVX fit the window and really, really performed well for me. So I went with that ball. That 
may not have rated so well in their robot testing, but robot testing is only a place to start. If you're looking for a low ball, look at the ones that didn't get the peak heights as high as others. If you're looking for a faster ball, by all means, definitely look at the top end balls that went the furthest on their test. Um, <clears throat> but again, they're, they're really glamming on to the soft is slow thing, and it may be changing your opinion for something that doesn't need to be changed. Uh, particularly if you are a Callaway fan, they have really dug their heels into exposing Callaway here. And it's a really rough one. I mean, they, they are really, really, really dogging them. And the part that troubles me about it the most is at the beginning of this year, Callaway backed out of their most wanted testing. So now it almost looks like Callaway is targeting or uh, they, they are targeting Callaway. And even though that's not the case, I know for a fact the guys were there wouldn't do that. But the problem is perception is everything, and that's what it's kind of looking like to a lot of people out there. So um, the two big ones with the Callaway issue that I do want to bring up, though, are they even, Callaway themselves has even said, we have some quality control issues at our ball facility. We're going to make steps to make sure those go away, um, which is huge for the consumer because without my golf spy doing this test, they never would have actually admitted they had a problem and fixed it. Um, and number two, the ball is a good ball, but again, it didn't work for me. So I can't tell you that it's better than something else or worse than something else. I can tell you I tried them. Uh, they didn't go as far. They didn't go as, uh, they went too high, blah, blah, blah. It, it is what it is. Anyway, to, to kind of wrap this up in a really quick little package here. Yes, softer balls go slower off the club face. It's a known fact. It's been that way since the beginning of time. A harder ball will always go farther. But is a harder ball, more distance ball, what you need to make the most of your game? Or is it the guy that can spin the ball better will benefit more or blah, blah, blah. Still, what you need to do if you are considering changing balls is go get a proper ball fitting. It is the only piece of equipment you use every shot of your round. Try it off drivers, try it off irons, try it off putters. Find out which ball works best for you. Pay attention to things like launch angles and peak heights. Um, you want something that's the middle of the road. You'll have some balls that go higher, some balls that go lower. Um, if distance is a problem, you may want a ball that goes higher so it carries farther. If you play a lot of dry courses like down in the Arizona area, you'll want a ball that'll roll out more. So a lower flight ball may benefit you a little bit more off the driver, but will be a problem coming in off of irons. So weigh your options out well, look at everything in the big picture, don't worry about soft is slow because even if it is slower than the tour ball or whatever, keep in mind for your game, you need what's going to work best for you. And that's why I really enjoyed the Mike Offs by um, ball fitting or ball testing for this year is because they really did do a comprehensive job of, hey, these are all the options and you can choose one of these based off of this data. Um, they even ranked them in how well the balls hold up, which is a great investment scheme. If you're looking at it at a $50 a dozen or a $40 a dozen ball, um, you get up into that four to $5 range and you do want it to hold up for at least a whole round. Um, that was one of my crit criticisms of some of the lesser balls that I tried, you know, uh, early on was, you know, they shredded so quick it was dangerous. So, um, anyway. If you are in the market to do some balls, um, get tested, get fitted, find what's going to work best for you. And yeah, I'll put a link down below, hopefully, to the testing results that my golf spy had, because I do think they are very useful. I just don't know that they're portraying the proper message for being fitted, just like they do with all the clubs and everything like that. Um, it would be like saying a regular shaft is longer than a stiff shaft for everybody. It's technically true, but there's a lot of caveats to that. So find what's going to work best for your game. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this down below. If you haven't had a chance, again, I'll toss that uh, link to their uh, 
their test results in the uh, description below. And I'll let you take a look and then let me know what you think. Is soft slow and which ball are you playing? Anyway, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.